Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at a total cost function and how we can use that function to calculate total variable cost, total fixed cost, average variable cost, average fixed cost, average total cost, and then finally, marginal cost. With that said, let's get into it. So even if you're not given the quantity, you can calculate all of the following six types of costs just given the original total cost equation. So here you can see the total cost equation is total cost is equal to 258Q, Q is the quantity produced, plus 70. The first thing I'm being asked to calculate is the total variable cost or the TVC. That's in the top left box. Now the total variable cost is variable based on the quantity of output that you have or the quantity that the firm produces. Now, we need to look at the cost equation and see which part of it depends on how big or small Q is. And you can see it's right here. This 258Q will increase or decrease as Q increases or decreases. So long story short, my total variable cost is 258Q. And then just as a reminder, this is the part of the total cost that varies with Q or changes with Q, hence the variable cost. Now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well then total fixed cost must be the part of the cost equation that's fixed and you'd be right. So this part is constant and it's 70 and it doesn't change as Q goes up or down because as Q goes up or down, well, 70 will just be 70. And so this is the part of the total cost that is constant or not changing, hence fixed. Now that we've got the easier things out of the way, let's look at the average variable cost. Now, remember the average variable cost is just the total variable cost divided by Q or the amount of units of output. So from before we calculated the total variable cost is 258Q. And so we're just going to divide that by Q. Now, if I divide it by Q, then these two Qs will cancel out and all I'll be left with is 258. And this means my average variable cost is 258. Now for average fixed cost, it's kind of similar. The average fixed cost is equal to the total fixed cost divided by Q. And the total fixed cost is 70. And so therefore the average fixed cost must be 70 over Q or 70 divided by Q. Now you might be thinking to yourself, whoa, 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 there's still Qs in the equation. Why haven't we solved for those? Well, in this particular problem, we haven't been told what the quantity being produced is. However, at the end of the video, I'll give you a Q value so that you can practice subbing it in and solving. In the meantime, let's take a look at average total cost. Now, average total cost is simply the sum of the average variable cost and the average fixed cost. So I just add them together. Now, I've calculated my average variable cost to be 258 and my average fixed cost to be 70 over Q. So therefore, my average total cost is just 258 plus 70 over Q. Now, sometimes you might be taught that the average total cost is just the total cost equation divided by Q. And it is. So if you did it that way, you're going to get the exact same solution. So don't worry about which way you do it. It'll get you the same answer. The final thing we want to look at is the marginal cost. Now the marginal cost is how much the total cost will increase per unit of quantity output increase or per a one unit increase in Q. Now this value is 258. And I want to remind you that it'll always be the slope of the total cost equation. So remember from high school math, Y equals MX plus B. Well, this is a linear equation. And in this case, the M value or the value in front of the Q in a linear sense will always be the slope and it will always be the marginal cost. If you're into calculus, then you can think of this as the derivative of the total cost function with respect to Q. It'll give you the same answer every single time. Now, let's suppose that we're given an actual Q value. So if the quantity produced is equal to 10, well then all I need to do is take that value of 10 and substitute it into all of the equations that I have where Q was still in them and I'll get these values. Now, if you go back one minute in the video, you pause the video there and you substitute in all of the Q values to be 10, then you should get all of these six answers. If you don't, then maybe you made an algebraic mistake and that's okay. Let me know in the comments if you got them right. And I hope that this video helped. If this video was helpful, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comments section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next.